good evening and I hope and more importantly that you're all well and happy and safe. I know this has been a difficult time in the world with the current uh, Ebola crisis. But different subject, well it's not really different. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi and what I've done with it is I've made it, I've linked it to Flight Radar 24 by following their instructions on their website that I'll link in below. So this basically receives um, the aircraft communications from their transponders, decodes it, then puts it up on the Flight Radar 24 website and I thought it would be a good, good location here in the shed. I'm going to power it using the, uh, the batteries over there and uh, to do that I need to obviously reduce the voltage from the 26 volts that it is down to 5 volts which is USB for this. Um, and I'm going to use one of these uh, little buck suppliers to do that and I'm going to feed it into the existing wiring in the shed. So currently I have a modem on the wall and that is powered again by another little buck regulator all the way through this cable that runs all the way along the top and down to the batteries and for protection I've got a poly fuse sitting here so that's a 2 amp poly fuse if more than 2 amps is drawn from these batteries it will trip so all I've got to do is connect that by a buck regulator to that line and then that should power the Pi. So this is the little bug regu buck regulator that I bought off eBay. It comes with a heatsink which to be honest seems pretty useless because it doesn't quite fit over the, uh, well it's a nice seat, it's not a MOSFET, it's just a dedicated chip. And you're quite risk, a high risk of shorting out of the FET and stuff so. I don't know how much difference this will make. I probably won't use it. I mean, it only draws about an amp anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get some wire, solder it on the in and the out. And uh, yeah, simple. So I've put the wires in and hooked them around so they're mechanically secure. And I'll just put some solder on there and that should hold it in. Right, so that's soldered up. See, soldered at the bottom. And for the other side, I'm going to use these um, female pogo pins, I think. They are. No, not pogo pins. Normal, whatever you call them, that goes on top of a Raspberry Pi. They fit on there. Like, oh, I can't do it now, one-handed. Like so. I'm going to use them to power the Pi, because you can power it through the header. And, uh, yeah, so I shall cut these ends, other ends off and solder them onto the end of this. So they are now soldered up and uh, it's ready to go on the wall. So it's important to find out which end obviously is positive and negative. So I've connected one end of the meter to one end of the lead and if we buzz this out that is negative. So now that one's negative and what I like to do is put a knot in there so we know which one's which. So I've tied the knot in the cable, I know this is negative, I can now connect it to the block that's up there knowing which one's which. And on the block up here, when I've done this previously, I've done a knot in the cable on the negative line. So I know that block is negative and that one is positive. Simple. And the thing's lit up, all we've got to do, put a DVM on this on the front there and we can find out, uh, what am I talking about? We can put a DVM here and we can set the voltage this is set to, we want to set it to 5 volts. And we do that by twiddling the pot. So I've got the DVM uh, voltmeter plugged in, measuring the output of this. And here's a tip for you, if you use two different size wires when you hang leads like this, the two ends can't short, so they're both, one sitting there and one sitting there. If they're both the same height, they could touch each other. If you use two different size wires, they can't touch each other. So there's the meter. i put it on here. I'm just going to adjust that down till it reads 5 volts. And it's going to nudge it up just so it's a tad over. Oh, bang on. Just like that. Raspberry Pi, and this one's in the case. These GPI pins, and if you Google search Raspberry Pi GPI pins, you'll find a pin out of these. But it goes 5 volts, 5 volts ground. So we want to put our power on any one of these first two pins and ground on this third pin here. So that's 5 volts, 5 volts ground. 
So that's powered and that's running. So all I've got to do now is connect an Ethernet cable from here to the router and my flight tracker is now running. Right, and that's it connected. Um, it's a bit messy at the moment. I'll tidy up the wiring in a second. But basically you can now power a Pi from any source um, using this method. And it can be for any project. I'm having to use it for a flight tracker, but you can use it for anything. So uh, that's it really, um, wish you all the best, hope you all stay healthy in this current situation and hopefully I'll uh, see you soon. Right, goodbye for now.